Hello and welcome to chapter 8, um, dealing with matrices and determinants. Um, as we discussed in class, I'm going to just briefly cover some certain points from 8.1, but we are going to jump right into 8.2 so that we can get everything covered that we need to in time for the ACT and MME test. Um, so for 8.1, this is matrices and systems of equations. Um, and we're going to start out looking at what matrices are, um, and I know you've had this before, so this should be kind of a review and a brush up. If you recall from your Algebra 2, um, a matrix is a rectangular array of real numbers. Um, in this case, we have a sample and we have a matrix which is made up of three rows that run horizontally. And in this case, we have three columns which also run vertically. Um, now, we use a notation. Um, the first entry and um, an entry is what each number is called in our matrix. It's going to be A sub 1, 1. And this one, the first one represents the first row. The second one represents the first column. So if I come over here, this would be A sub 1 for the first row, 2 for the second column. And my third entry would be A sub 1 for the first row and 3 for the third column. If I go down to the second row, I have a sub 2 for the second row, 1 for the first column, a sub 2, 2 for the second row, second column, and a sub 2, 3 for the second row, third column. And we're going to repeat all of this for the third row, first column, third row, second column, and third row, third column. This matrix that we generated here is said to be a 3 by 3 matrix because it has three rows which is what the first um, number represents so we have rows and our second three represents the number of columns so it goes rows by columns um, and typically we name um, labels with some type of a capital letter whether it be A or B, C, whatever you want to call it but they're usually denoted with a capital letter Back in Chapter 7, we just got done studying um, systems of equations. Um, what we can do now that we're in Chapter 8 is we can actually represent these system of equations in a matrix form. And there's two ways we can do this. We can use what we call an augmented matrix, which includes the constant terms um, right here. Or we can just do a coefficient matrix, which deals with just the coefficients of your x, y, and z, or whatever your variables are. And if we look at example one, example one says that we're given the system um, right here, and we want to write this system as an augmented matrix. So an augmented matrix would be my bracket, which represents a matrix. I'm going to take the coefficient of each term. So for that, when I look at the first row there, I have 1x, 1y, 1z. Now for the augmented, I'm going to put little dots here, and then I'm going to put my 2. These dots right here represent kind of like the equal sign or the separation between your coefficients and your constant term. Then I'm going to go and do the same thing for my second equation. I have a 2 in front of my x, a negative 1 in front of y, and a 3 in front of z. Again, I'm going to put my dots and my constant term of a negative 1. And for the third equation, I have a negative 1 in front of x. I have no y terms, or 0y, and I have a negative 1 in front of my z. I'm going to include my three dots to separate my constants from my coefficients. And I'm going to place my constant of 4 in there and close my matrix. This is what an augmented matrix looks like. As you can see, we have all of our coefficients on this side and all of our constants on this side. For the coefficient matrix, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deal with strictly the coefficients of my equation. So my coefficients, when I look, are going to be 1, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 
negative 1. And that's all I have to list out. Now this concludes the stuff that we have to cover from section 8.1 for now. We'll come back to the rest of it after the MME and ACT. Now let's look at section 8.2, which deals with operations and matrices. Um, if you recall from Algebra 2, two matrices are equal if and only if they have the same order or the dimensions. This would be like our 3 by 3 or 2 by 4, whatever the case is. And they must have corresponding entries um, those have to be equal if the two matrices are going to be equal. So if we look at example two, we are given that this matrix right here equals this matrix right here. So if that's the case, we can actually go in and solve for A11, A12, A21, and A22 because I have the same dimensions. I have a, let's write this in here, we have a two by 2, because I have two rows and two columns. I also have a 2 by 2 on this side. So because of that, um, and because I know that corresponding entries are equal, I can go ahead and solve. A11 is going to equal the first term over here, because those are corresponding entries. And that is a 2. A12 is going to equal a negative 1. A21 equals a negative 3. And A22 is going to equal 0. Now let's go ahead and look at um, matrix addition, which also includes subtraction. If we want to add or subtract matrices, the first thing we have to look at is we have to make sure that they are of the same order or they have the same dimensions. If you have two matrices that are not of the same order, um, when you go to add them, they're going to be undefined. You cannot do this. Um, and then if they are of the same order, to add or subtract, you have to add or subtract the corresponding entries. So let's and look at example three. Here it says to add, um, I have a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2 for part A. So they have the same um, dimensions or the same order. So now to add these, I'm going to get a 2 by 2 out of this, and I'm just going to add a negative 1 to a positive 1 because these are corresponding entries. That's going to give me 0. I have 2 plus 3 is going to give me 5. Then I have 0 plus a negative 1 will give me a negative 1, and 1 plus 2 will give me 3. So the matrix that I was able to obtain by adding the previous two was 0, 5, and negative 1, 3. Now for part B, I have a 3 by 3 matrix that I'm going to be adding to a 3 by 2. Because I have a 3 by 3 and a 3 by 2, these matrices are not of the same order. Um, they're they're different dimensions, therefore I cannot add these, and we would say that these um, are undefined. So the sum is undefined. Next, we're going to look at scalar multiplication. If you recall, a scalar would be just some number, and in this, in the course of our text, it's going to be some real number, and it's usually denoted by a lowercase c. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to multiply each entry of our matrix by this scalar. And we can look at our example here in just a second. Example 4 says that we're given matrix A and matrix B, both of which are 3 by 3s. If we want to um, multiply 3A, what you'll note is 3 is actually the scalar, and we're going to multiply every entry in A, so all of these up here, by 3. When I do that, I have 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. 3 times this 2 is also 6. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3, 
and 3 times 2 is 6. So our scalar multiplication produces this matrix right here. For part B, it says a negative B. And if you recall, a negative B is really negative 1 times matrix B. So I'm going to go in and multiply each entry from matrix B by negative 1. When I do that, I end up with a negative negative 2 will give me a positive 2. Negative 1 times 0 is still 0. Same thing for the next term. Then I have a negative 1 times a negative 1, which will give me a positive 1. Negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4. And a negative 1 times 3 will give me a negative 3. And if I go to my third row, I have negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1. Negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3. And negative 1 times a negative 2 is a positive 2. So now I'm able to obtain this new 3 by 3 matrix. For part C, I see that I have the scalar of 3 multiplied by A, and then I'm going to be subtracting B from that. I would suggest that you would distribute scalars, um, if at all possible, and I'm going to rewrite that. And we, since we did this up in part A, I'm just going to reuse that matrix. So I have 6, 6, 12, negative 9, 0, negative 3, and 6, 3, 6. And I'm going to be subtracting matrix B, which was negative 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 4, 3, and 1, negative 3, negative 2. When I do that, as we mentioned earlier, when we subtract or add, we have to add or subtract corresponding entries. So I have 6 minus a negative 2. Let me change my color here. So 6 minus a negative 2 becomes 6 plus 2, or I get 8. 6 minus 0 is still 6. 12 minus 0 is still 12. Then I have negative 9 minus a negative 1, which becomes negative 9 plus 1, or a negative 8. I have 0 minus 4, or negative 4. Negative 3 minus 3. Negative 3 minus 3, oops. Sorry is actually a negative 6. So this here should be a negative 6. And then I have 6 minus 1, which is 5. 3 minus a negative 3 becomes 3 plus 3, or 6. And 6 minus a negative 2 becomes 6 plus 2, or 8. So my new matrix is 8, 6, 12, negative 8, negative 4, negative 6, and 5, 6, 8. Um, I did actually go ahead and list out the properties of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. This can actually be found at the top of page 590 in your textbook. But kind of just a summary, um, it tells us that if we take matrix A and add it to B, that would be the same thing as if we took matrix B and added it to A. I can go A plus the quantity of B plus C, and that's the same thing as going the quantity of A plus B plus C. If I have um, two scalars, in this case C and D, and I'm multiplying them by A, that's the same thing as going C times a quantity of DA. If I take one and a scalar of one, multiply it by A, that will give me matrix A still. Five says if I take some scalar and multiply it by the quantity of two matrices being added together, I'm going to get the scalar C times matrix A plus. This, and that should be a scalar here, sorry, or a lowercase c, times matrix B. So let's fix that real quick. So this should be C times matrix B. And then number six says if I have the quantity of two scalars that are being added, and I'm going to multiply that by A, that's the same thing as if I were to distribute A onto both of those, I would have the scalar C times matrix A plus the scalar D times matrix A. And again, you have these on page 590 of your textbook. 
For our last example in 8.2 part A, um, we are going to solve for x in the equation 3x plus matrix A equals matrix B, and we are given what matrix A and B are. Now what I would do is I would treat this just as a standard algebra problem. So if I have 3x plus A equals B, the first thing I want to do is I want to go and isolate oops, um, x to figure out what x is um, going to equal so that all I have to do then is plug my matrix values in and solve. So when I do that, I end up with 3x is equal to b minus a or x is equal to one-third times matrix B minus A. So what this tells me then is if I take the quantity of matrix B minus A, come up with a single matrix, all I have to do then is go through and multiply each term by that scalar of one-third, and I have um, X solved for. So let's go ahead and do that. So matrix X is going to be equal to one-third times matrix B, which is a negative 3, 4, 2, 1, minus matrix A, which was 1, negative 2, 0, 3, and these are all being grouped together. So I have 1 third times the difference between matrix B and A is negative 3 minus 1, which is a negative 4, 4 minus a negative 2 becomes 4 plus 2, or 6. 2 minus 0 is 2, and 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. So if I go ahead and continue to simplify, and I distribute this 1 third, I end up with a negative 4 thirds. 1 third times 6 is really going to give me 2. 1 third times 2 is going to give me 2 thirds, and 1 third times a negative 2 is going to give me a negative 2 thirds. So my final answer for matrix X is going to be this matrix right here. If you have any questions, please make sure to write them down, and I would be more than happy to go over them in class tomorrow. Thank you.